How much have the stories been kind of shifting nuance wise to address what's happening with new runners coming into the race like Michael Bloomberg and what the economic situation of this country now looks like for many millions of Americans? Dom, I don't think uh, Bloomberg in absentia played any role in the debate last night, but what we saw was the consequence of a smaller debate stage. So uh, Cory Booker wasn't there, Julian Castro wasn't there, Kamala Harris wasn't there. She's dropped out of the race. The other two didn't qualify. Uh, and as a result, you had more space for people like Amy Klobuchar, who has an appeal that is similar to Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg. That is, uh, she's running as a, uh, as she said last night, a pragmatic progressive. Uh, and that uh, sensibility uh, was larger on the stage as compared to the Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders much more aggressive uh, approach to fundamentally changing America's capitalist system. And uh, the question is going to be whether Amy Klobuchar can uh, translate that added attention and that uh, star turn she had last night into some progress in Iowa where she's got to break out in order to become a top tier contender. All right. So, Jimmy, I mean, John lays out some excellent mm -hmm. points there. There are many parts of this debate that centered on the economy, how things are working out for, for millions of Americans, just middle class Americans in general. Can we talk about the shift, perhaps, that perhaps Amy Klobuchar is gaining some steam, Pete Buttigieg is gaining some steam over some of the more left leaning and, and far left leaning policies that perhaps Elizabeth Warren and right. perhaps, you know, I, I don't know, Bernie Sanders have put out there over the past few months? Is the strategy still sound to go after the wealthy, go after the capitalist system in America? Well, I'm not sure it is. Uh, I think candidates like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders who want, well, at least as Elizabeth Warren calls it, quote unquote, big structural change, have a problem with an economy where the unemployment rate is at a 50 year low. Uh, by this time next year, it might be at a 60 year low. Do voters overall think the economy needs big structural change when it's actually been pretty good? Uh, wages have been rising. Wages actually have actually been rising fastest uh, for lower income workers. Do people want to sort of blow up the system or are they going to be more interested in a candidate who, sort of want, who wants to fix things where there's problems, but otherwise keep the, our basic capitalist uh, system intact? So Pete Buttigieg, John Harwood, Pete Buttigieg mentioned that he doesn't think that many Americans, especially in his his home, his, his his district out in Indiana, measure their well-being based upon the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They look at how they're doing. So how exactly are those Americans doing? We, we, I mean, Jimmy lays out a good point. 50-year lows in terms of unemployment, a GDP that's growing, albeit still modestly, and a record high stock market. Let's leave that aside. Is there a narrative that these folks will then have to string together that addresses that? Or do you think that people will just say that the American economy is just sound? Well, it depends on your angle of vision. And, and Jimmy framed uh, correctly what the what the choice is going to be and what the competing arguments are going to be. On the one hand, if you look at the con, uh, conventional metrics of uh, uh, continued growth in gross national product, the fact that we are in uh, a record long expansion, the fact that unemployment's low, uh, those are, and the market is doing well, those are all good things. But uh, unemployment's low, uh, many Americans uh, have poor quality jobs, they don't make that much money. Long term trend, we don't have uh, uh, significant growth in wages in the middle and working class of the country. We have an economy that knows how to generate large corporate profits uh, that uh, uh, does very well in uh, sort of global market share. Uh, but many average Americans don't feel the return. So uh, are you are you looking for the best version of what we have and that we're close to having that right now? Or do you think that the, it is feasible for the United States to create something new that generates the rise in living standards, say, that we saw in the 1960s and early 1970s before this long term uh, uh, transition in the economy took place? All right, so, so Jimmy, we'll give you the last word here. Mm -hmm. Is the economy good enough right now for the president and his administration to kind of take a victory lap or rest on their laurels? Or do they need to do more work to convince more Americans who are feeling marginalized right now that they should get along and vote on his ticket? Well, listen, another year of growth will help. And he needs to convince Americans that not only is the economy good, but his policies are why it's good. And this just isn't some sort of continuation for the Obama years. 
And even though it's overall a fantastic economy, there's a lot of geographical imbalance, and things aren't quite as good as in those Midwestern states. And I'm sure Democrats will mention it, though I didn't get a real sense of that last night.